All right, welcome back to another video, everyone. And today, what I have for everyone is my full camera review for the cameras and the software interface on the Eulophone Power Armor 16 Pro. All right, so today in this video, what I'm going to do for everyone is we're going to go through everything that you need to know in terms of the Eulophone Power Armor 16 Pro and its cameras. And then I'm going to attach my photo samples and my video samples at the end of the video. And I'm going to give y'all my overall thoughts and opinions on the overall camera performance in this video. So hopefully by the end of this video, you guys and gals know if this device is worth picking up if you're very camera centric. So hopefully this video helps you out. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, first things first, I like to start off these camera reviews or camera walkthroughs with uh, a walkthrough of the camera interface and all of its features. Now, feature number one actually starts before you even launch the cameras. And feature number one is how you launch the cameras. And I showed y'all this in the software walkthrough portion of the device, but I'm going to show you again for this camera video. So, this device actually has a really neat feature where you can double press the power button to launch you directly into the cameras. To turn off and turn on that feature, or to turn on or turn off that feature, you need to go into Intelligent Assist, which is located in Settings. So you would launch the Settings, we would scroll down to Intelligent Assist, and then you wanna scroll down to Quickly Open Camera. And you can see it tells you, quickly open the camera by pressing the power button twice. So you quickly open the camera by double pressing the power button twice. Okay? So that's how you would launch into the camera if you don't want to uh, tap the camera icon on your home screens. All right? Another thing you can do, and if we come out, I'm going to show you, you can go into custom key. And you can actually program the custom key to launch any application you would like. So, if you want the custom key to launch the cameras, you can see right now I have mine set for a single press takes a screenshot. If you want to set it up to where a single press launches the camera, all you have to do is tap here. And then we're going to go in. And you're going to go over to open applications, right? And then you just find the camera. Okay? You tap it, and then that will launch you directly into the camera with a single press of the custom key. So right now, I'll set it to camera. And now, I'm going to demonstrate for everyone. Y'all check out the B-roll that will be up on the screen the two ways that I have now set up to launch the camera. So here, before I show y'all anything, here is the way with the custom key. So all I have to do is press the orange custom key on the side of the device, and it will open the camera app. I'm going to go ahead and run that B-roll now, and I'm going to do it for you twice. Okay? And then, again, let me go back and show you one more time. Underneath Intelligent Assist, you scroll down and you go quickly open the camera. You make sure this setting is toggled on. And then all we have to do is simply double press the power button twice and it will launch you directly into the cameras. I'm going to go ahead and drop that B-roll in now. All right, and I'm going to do it for you twice. Good stuff. Okay? And then other than that, the traditional way that we can launch into the cameras 
is simply just by finding our camera icon on any one of our home screens on our device. So here I made a folder and you just tap on it and it launches you in. Okay, just like that. And now we're in the main camera interface landing page. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and walk everyone through the uh, modes and features on your cameras. All right, so here we go. Now, I just wanna let everyone know I actually have my camera interface fully customized so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the customizations so y'all can see what it comes on by default. So we're going to reset. And do you want to reset cameras to default settings? Yep. So we're going to hit OK. And now it's, it's resetting the camera back to the default settings. So now there are no customizations in terms of the cameras whatsoever. So now let's go ahead and walk on through it. Okay. So, we're going to go over the modes um, at the bottom in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and walk through each individual mode. Let's start off with the primary camera mode. So, across the top here, from left to right, we have our flash controls. So, if you tap on it, you can control whether the flash is on, whether it's on auto mode, so you let the system decide, or it's on, on all the time, every time before you take a photo. Now, generally, I like to turn the flash off. And you see, what I like about this camera interface is it will stay up until you select an option. So right now, by default, it comes set to auto, so it lets the cameras and the system decide. But I like to set mine to off, so I'm going to set that now. Then once I set it, it sets it, and then it goes out of the that it goes out of that sub menu okay then right next to that we do have hdr support or high dynamic range support on this device and again you can see by default it comes turned off but you can set it to auto or you can set it to always be on all right now by default i like to set mines to auto okay I like to let the system decide when it, when it wants to pump up the high dynamic range and get the best possible colors, at least for that. And then right next to that, we do have a built-in AI mode or scene optimizer mode. Now, by default, it comes off. And then if I want to turn it on, I just have to tap on it. So you see, before it was unlit, that means it was off and now it's lit and that means it's on but by default it comes turned off okay generally i just like to leave that turned off okay so we're going to turn that back off then right next to that we have our themes for the scene modes so if i tap on this you can see all our different themes for different scenes come up across the bottom here so we have gorgeous we have faded we have gourmet we have pleasant and then there's a bunch of different themes here and it actually gives you a live preview of each so i can go ahead and switch it to sweet you can see it dims out a little bit so on and so forth cartoon gray mono Mono is actually one of my favorites because it gives you that white and black look. I'm a big fan of that white and black look. But when I was testing the device, I didn't use any themes. So I just set it to none. So it stays on exactly what the true to life colors are supposed to be. All right. All right. Okay. Now moving on, next to the themes or scene selector, we have a uh, gear icon which brings up more settings. Let's go ahead and walk through it now because it doesn't really dive us into a deeper subsetting. It just pops up an overlay on the screen. So let's go ahead and dive into it now. So if I hit the settings gear icon on the top left, it's going to bring up some additional settings, right? So let's go through these from left to right. Now, customization. 
Okay, that is how I customized the layout that y'all first initially saw. So if you tap on customization, you can customize a few different things here. And now we're in a sub menu, a deeper sub menu. So you can customize the layout for your modes. Okay, and let me just go ahead and set it back up how I had it. So you can take out all the modes by pressing and holding and just dragging them down. Okay, everything except for the main two modes being camera and video or photo and video. And then you could just drag and drop the modes that you actually like to use. So I'm not a fan of macro mode. I'm not a fan of uh, panorama. I'm not a fan of UHD, eye detection, clarity mode, beauty mode, basically, time lapse. I am a fan of um, intelligent scan because that lets me scan documents and text and get all that stuff onto the device. Um, GIF creator, not so much, but I am a fan of night mode, pro mode, portrait mode. Okay, so that's actually what I had set up, and I actually drop it in in the order I like to use it. So, first things first, night mode, and I did take some of the photo samples using night mode in particular for the low light shots. So, all of the low light shots were done using night mode, and I gotta tell y'all, the shutter speed when you use night mode drops considerably. Okay, so you really, really, really have to have a steady hand if you want to take some good or even decent night mode shots. And it really was a struggle for me because y'all know this is a shaky hands production around here unless I use a mount. So it was really a struggle for me to try and take some really good night mode shots. But I think the shots that I did take did turn out pretty good. All right. All right. So night mode is up first, and then we got portrait mode. So I'm gonna drag that in. Boom! I love me a good portrait mode, and then we're gonna finish it up with pro mode. Well, not really, because I'm more of a pro video mode person. Okay, but we are gonna drop in intelligent scan. Boom. So these are the modes that I like to use primarily by default. And if I can customize the layout of my cameras, I typically set it up like this. Now to confirm this and set it, you just hit the checkbox. Boom. And now these modes are set. Okay. So you can see if I swipe through, we got video mode in the front, photo mode. Then we got night mode. Then we got portrait mode. And then we got intelligent scan. And then there's the more section with our additional modes. All right? Just showing y'all that. Let's go back to the primary photo mode here. Okay? And go back into settings. All right? And you can customize a few other things here as well. So I showed you the layout. Okay? But you can also sh change how the modes look for the more section. So now it's set up to be a tab. So I have to swipe all the way over and then click on the more tab, but you can set it up to be a panel. So you just swipe up to get into the more section panel. So let me set that real quick and show you guys. So now it's set up to be a panel. So even if I swipe all the way over, there's no more tab here but you can see across the bottom regardless of whatever mode i'm in you see that little pill that means i could swipe up at any time and get into my additional modes and i actually like having that if there's an instance where i might need to use an additional mode i like having that swipe up panel right so like let's say i'm in video and i need access to a different mode maybe Pro mode, I like having that additional panel. All right, so I actually set it up like this. Let's go back to photos. All right, and then let's keep going here. And then the rest of this inside a custom is pretty much self explanatory, right? The color of the uh, highlighted text, you can choose your color. 
okay, and apply it. I have mine set to blue. Y'all know I'm a big fan of blue, so I had mine set to blue. I'm going to go ahead and set that back. But here's the different colors, and they give you a live preview of what each color highlight looks like. I like the blue, which is like a water blue, my favorite, or a light blue or a sky blue. And then you hit apply to confirm. And now your highlighted colors are set. Going back in, you see it changes everything in terms of highlights. Okay. Then going back in, we have our shutter sound. Now, these are the different shutter sounds. Okay. Texture. All right. Film. Okay, those are the different shutter sounds. I like film, so I just leave it set to film. Set that back and let's get out of here. Okay, and those are your different customiz customizable modes, all right? And I actually think that's a decent amount of customization. Let's dive into some more settings now. Next to that, we have our different picture sizes. Now, for reference, as I said earlier in the unboxing, you have a 16 megapixel primary camera on the rear, you have an 8 megapixel secondary camera on the front, and then you have a 2 megapixel macro camera on the rear as well, and then an AI scene detector sensor, okay? But in all honesty, y'all know what I'm about to say, but if you're new to my channel, not a fan of macro cameras, that's garbage. A good ultra wide can do the same thing. All right, just like I'm not a fan of depth sensors, unless it's a really good depth sensor, a good uh, software can do the same thing as a depth sensor. So for me, if you're gonna add additional cameras, we really should only be talking about a good quality zoom lens. If it's not gonna be good quality, don't do it or a decent to good quality ultra wide. Again, if it's not gonna be decent or good, don't do it, okay? But I just wanted to run y'all through the camera specs right there. Now, in terms of the scene, we got 16 megapixels, but if you wanna take advantage of all 16 megapixels, you're gonna be shooting in the four by three aspect ratio. If you wanna do full screen, that's gonna bump you down to 12 megapixels. And you see it live adjust it as you select it. So now we're set to 12 megapixels, okay? But you can also go down to eight megapixels in four by three. So now we're in eight megapixels, okay? Or you can do five megapixels in full. So now we're in five megapixels. Now. Just in the interest of full disclosure, when I took all the photos, whether it be with the rear-facing or front-facing cameras, I had it set to full megapixel mode. So in the interest, in the interest. So for the rear-facing camera, that means it was set to four by three at sixteen megapixels. That's what all my photos were taken at with the rear-facing camera. All right. And the same thing applies for the front. Let me just show you real quick. Spin it around. How you doing, guys and gals? Go into the settings again. And we pretty much have similar settings. So go into photo size. We max out at 8 megapixels. Then we go all the way down to 3 megapixels. And all the photos were taken in full 8 megapixel mode in either auto mode or portrait mode or night mode, all right? But I didn't really take too many low light selfies. As I said, if you see the scene in low light, that means it was done in night mode, okay? If not, it was done in portrait mode or auto mode. Trust me, when you look at the photo samples, you'll be able to tell the difference. I don't really have to label much. You'll be able to tell the difference. Trust me, okay? But there is the picture sizes for the front-facing camera. As is, there is the picture sizes for the rear-facing cam camera. And you can see it's pretty much the same for the front as it is with the rear. 
but we do have a few different modes. In particular, we have mirror mode. So it will mirror the image and flip it for you after you take it. And I actually like using that, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. But let's jump back to the 16 megapixel rear facing camera. Let's do that. Okay. And jump back into the settings. So we went over the picture sizes. You can see right next to the picture sizes, we have the location information. Now that turns on the metadata, which stores a piece of your location inside of the metadata for each video and each photo that you take. And I always recommend that you turn that off because with a little bit of technical know-how, pretty much Googling it, anyone can access your location from the metadata in the photos that you post. And being as that this is a very social media age, that location information is very important. You don't want to give the wrong people access to your location. So I always recommend you turn that off. Okay. Then right next to that in the far upper right hand corner, we have a brand watermark. So this is how you get that, uh, that watermark on the photos where it says the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. And I do have this turned on for all of the photos, but you could toggle it off and on here. I'm going to leave it on. Okay. Then we have the mute for the shutter sound for the cameras. So you turn it on, you get the shutter sound. You turn it off, you don't get the shutter sound. I like to turn mine off. Okay. Then we have one tap to take a photo. So pretty much what you do, one tap. When you come out, it's going to tap and take the photo. That's it. And take the photo. And you see, it's going to take a second and populate in our photos gallery preview down in the bottom left hand corner. But I don't like to do that. that. That leads to a lot of accidental photos. So I typically leave that turned off and it does come turned off by default. Then right next to that, we have our timer. This is self explanatory. But it's always good to have a good timer, but you only get the timer for photos. It would have been nice to have the timer for video as well. This way you can set up things, then push the timer, frame it, and then the video will start. But you only get the timer for photos. You don't get a timer for videos. And in particular, when you hit the drop down here, you see the little drop down arrow. Then you can see the different timer settings. So we have two seconds. Or 10 seconds that's it okay and honestly two seconds is more than enough so I leave it set to two seconds sometimes I need that to frame up my photos okay so we're gonna set that to two seconds then we have our assisted grid lines so pretty much the uh, three by three assisted grid lines and I actually like using that again because it helps me frame up my photo and my video so I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. Okay. And then we have volume functions and this is really cool. So you got volume functions for the overall volume of the video or the photo or the system in general, or you can set it up to where the volume keys uh, take photos. You can also set it up to where the volume keys start and stop video as well. But my favorite thing, is zoom so you can use the volume buttons to control the zoom all right and i'm going to actually set that right here and make sure that's set to zoom so boom we got the zoom set okay then right next to that we got our anti-flicker anti-banding now i'm not too sure what exactly this does but i typically when i see this setting I set it to auto and I let the system do its own thing. But if y'all know what that does, like I said, I say this in all my videos. I am not a professional when it comes to cameras. Okay. I'm just a little bit of a tech junkie. I like my tech and I like providing detailed walkthroughs and information so people know everything about what they're purchasing. This way you get comfortable with it before you spend your hard earned money. That's all I do here. Okay, 
I am not an expert. I am not a professional by any means. I'm just an average person, okay, with a love of tech, so to speak. Okay, but that's your anti-flickering, anti-banding. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure what that does. So I just typically set it to auto anytime it's included in the camera. So we're going to turn that on, leave it set to auto. All right, and that pretty much goes over the sub settings for the cameras. And then we have our reset button, as I already showed out earlier. Okay, so we can get out of this now. Okay. And that pretty much goes over the settings across the top. Now, let's take some time to go through the different modes. So, let's go over to video here. Okay. And in particular, when you are in video, you do have access to your flash up in the top left. So, you can have your flash on while recording video if you feel you need it. You can set it to auto mode or you can turn it off. Now, generally, I leave it turned off because I feel like the flash from your camera for video tends to be a little harsh. And it does come off by default, as you can see. So I'm just going to tap it, and we're going to leave it turned off. Okay? Then, other than that, there's no other settings except for your gear icon. So if we tap on our gear icon, you can see we got access to our custom settings again, which is pretty much the same thing as before in the photos and it's already set so we're not going to do that again but we also have access to our resolutions so if we tap on video quality we can see our different resolutions that we can record video at now okay i am not going to torture your eyes by recording in the lowest possible resolution so the only resolutions that i'm going to record in in terms of video samples is 720p and 1080p we're going to do 720p first all right but it can all the it can go all the way down to standard definition 480p but no don't don't torture yourself like that don't do that the minimum you want to be using is 720p all right so we're going to go ahead and do that now set that to 720p Boom. Now, one thing that I want to mention is you close the camera and open the camera, it auto resets um, the video quality, right? And you can see by default, it came set to the maximum resolution for the video quality. So if I change modes and come back, or I close the camera and come back, it auto resets the video quality. So if you're recording in a specific resolution, and I actually did this, so some of my some of my video recordings I actually had to record over. If you're recording in a specific resolution, you will have to set that before you push record for each video. I didn't realize that. I thought it stayed set to what I clicked it on. No matter if I open and close the camera or switch the modes, but no, if you switch the modes or you open and close the camera, it will auto reset the video quality or IE video resolution to 1080p, which is the maximum. So I had to constantly remember when I was doing the 720p testing to constantly switch it to 720p resolution or 720p quality. If not, it auto defaulted to 1080p. All right. So I wanted I wanted to throw out that tip there or that warning here. If you notice that the quality between your videos is different, that's because it auto sets every time you open and close the app. It auto sets back to the highest resolution. Okay. Then right next to the video quality or video resolution, we have our microphone controls. So if you want to mute the microphones, you just tap to turn it off. Now the microphones are muted for the um, <clears throat> for the videos and photos. If you want to use the in the built-in microphones, you just turn it on. Now the built-in microphones are turned on. Now it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but I did not test to see 
if you can use the audio directly from a microphone plugged in to the jack. And I didn't test to see if um, if it will give you that option. As a matter of fact, you might as well just do it now. Let me just test it now. So let me open up the flap here and we'll see what it does. I really need to grow my fingernails out. All right, so let me open the flap up. Okay, let me grab one of my microphones. Okay, grab one of my microphones here. And let's see if it does support plug and play uh, mics with the stock camera app. So let me go ahead and plug it in. Ooh, that's kind of a tight squeeze. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, she's in. I didn't get any type of uh, notification. So it didn't tell me. Nope, it doesn't tell me. And I will let you guys and gals know if it says anything when I start recording a video. As a matter of fact, if I start recording a video now, will it mess up my screen recording? Let me see. All right. Let me see. Are we still going here? Okay, we're still recording. Okay, so it doesn't tell me, and it doesn't look like it supports plug and play microphones. So, although it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you will need to sideload a third party uh, application to use plug and play audio. Now, I would recommend Open Camera, that's a good one, or 4K Camera Pro. But um, 4K, I think 4K Camera Pro, I think you have to pay for that one. I don't remember. But Open Camera is free. So I'll leave links to that down below in the video description. But I just wanted to test that in real time for everyone. So although you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it doesn't support plug and play microphone. Okay. Now, moving on, we can also mute the camera so we can mute camera sounds all together we have our grid lines we have our volume controls so again if you're in video if you change it to shutter that will mean in video you can start and stop video and then we have our zoom controls and then our anti flickering right and that's pretty much it for video right if we swipe over we already talked about photos, okay? If we swipe over, my, night mode is pretty much self-explanatory, but I can tell you, night mode does work really well, okay? Really well, you just need a steady hand. As I said earlier, you need a steady hand. It's kind of difficult without a steady hand, and the device is really heavy. So keep that in mind, but the night mode does actually do a good job. Then we have portrait mode, and we have portrait mode for the rear-facing camera, as well as we have portrait mode for the front-facing camera. And you can see it does give you a live demonstration, okay? So you can see how it's blurring out the background around me. And you know, surprisingly, the portrait mode here is actually pretty good pretty good indeed okay and then we have intelligent scan so this lets me scan documents uh, scan text for photos all that good stuff here and then extract it so right now it's zooming in because it think it, it thinks it sees text on my phone which it does so it's trying to zoom in to make it better but now it completely zoomed in out of the text. So now it's zooming back out because it doesn't see the text. So all you have to do is let it 
scan the scene, and if it detects text, it will try to make sure it's in focus before it takes it. And then you can snap the little button down here to get the extracted text. All right? But <laughs> we don't have any text to extract right now based on what it's seeing. Now, it did see the text down here on the bottom of my device. But you see, it couldn't really grab it, so it started to zoom in. But that's intelligent scan. And we, w we already went over the different modes, sub-modes, and how you access them. Now, I'm not going to take any macro shots. Honestly, it's not a good macro camera. After doing a few test samples, I was like, no. I'm, I'm not going to hurt y'all eyes like that. No. So we're not going to do any macro shots. We're not going to do any other shots like that. So, again, no beauty mode. So we're not doing that. Not doing any time lapse, we're not doing any panoramas. No, no, okay, all right. So that goes over the modes. Let's go back to photo mode now, okay. And then you can see below our modes, which you can swipe through or tap through, we have a shutter button, which turns into a video button or a night mode button, okay, depending on the mode that you're in. Or a portrait mode button, okay? Depending on the mode that you're in, all right? So it does change based on your mode. And then to the left of that, we got a quick shortcut with a live preview to our gallery, which is Google Photos. It uses Google Photos as its main gallery application. And you can see we, can, we have a live preview of our most recent photo or video, okay? To the left. And then to the right, we have a quick shortcut to switch to our front-facing camera. Okay, so let's do that now. So now we're in the front-facing camera, and I already pretty much went over all the important stuff here. It's basically the same, okay? Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that we do have flash for the front-facing camera, but that just brightens the screen up to try and use the screen as flash. It's not a true flash, okay? And I don't like to use flash, so I'll leave it turned off. We have our scene modes or our themes. We already went over that, so you get the same themes or scenes as the rear-facing cameras in the front, okay? And again, pretty much everything you can do with the rear, aside from pro mode, you can do with the front, okay? Now, jumping over to video, I just want to verify, even though I said it already, if we dive into the settings here, you can see we go to video quality. We got a maximum recording resolution for the front of 1080p, 30fps. Okay? And again, much like the rear, if you're using the front-facing camera and you come out and come back in, it auto resets to the highest resolution. Okay, so if you're recording at a, at, at a certain resolution, you need to make sure that you set it manually before you push record each time. Okay, other than that, pretty much everything is the same with the front as it is with the rear. Okay, okay, so we don't have to touch on this too much. All right, everyone. So that pretty much does it for the software walkthrough of the camera interface on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro.
doing here today. Today we're getting into the camera testing, well the video testing for the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. We're out here in shooting space number one here today and we're starting off with the front facing 8 megapixel camera. So what we have here is a real quick front facing 8 megapixel 720p 30 fps stationary vlog style test. This is being recorded in 720p at 30 fps with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what you guys and gals think of this. How's it doing with the detail? How's it doing with the colors? How's it doing with the exposure? How's the overall audio? Let me know. As always, leave all your feedback down below. All right. Let's go ahead and spin the camera around now and get into testing out the rare facing 16 megapixel primary camera, also at 720p. Give me one second, I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, everyone. So now we're testing out the rear facing 16 megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. This is being recorded in 720p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. Okay, now I am using a smartphone mount and a recording rig because there is no stabilization on this microphone, on this microphone, on this camera whatsoever. And it is a heavy beast and trying to do this handheld, there will be a bunch of shake. So even though there's still gonna be a little bit of shake, it shouldn't be as bad but you should get an overall idea as to how the stabilization is doing here as we go through the initial pan testing. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the exposure test. So we're gonna line up on the tree and we're gonna pan up and down. And when we test the exposure, we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as evenly and as quickly as possible. So let's see what happens. Let's do this three times. So lined up on the tree and we're gonna pan down. Ooh, that bad boy overexposed something fierce. Okay, and we're gonna go back up. Ooh, that's one. Yeah, buddy. Here we go, let's do it again. Down. and up. That's two. Last one, lined up on the tree, down, and up. All right, that's three. Now, let's go ahead and test out the focusing speeds. So the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro does have continuous autofocus as well as tap to focus. We're gonna test out both we're gonna test out autofocus first. So we're gonna pick our three focal subjects. So we got the bushes to the left. We have the tree in the center. And then we have the pillar off to the right. And we're gonna see how the continuous autofocus does first. So I'm gonna test this twice. And then we're gonna to switch to tap to focus. Here we go. So far left, we should be lined up on the bushes. Okay, right down the center. Should be lined up on the tree. And then over to the right, we should be lined up on the pillar. Leave, leave your guys and gals feedback as to how the cameras are performing down below in the comments, as we always do. Y'all know how we do. All right, one more time. Bushes to the left. Okay. Tree down the center. Okay. Pillar off to the right. All right. All right, let me adjust my grip now so we can do the tap to focus. Here we go again, bushes, tap, locked up. That was fairly quick. Tree, tap, locked up. That was also fairly quick. Pillar, tap, locked up. Ooh, look at the experience. The exposure leveling there when I tap to lock focus on the pillar. Whew. All right, so that's one. Let's do it one more time. Bushes. 
Tap. Locked up. Tree in the center. Tap. Locked up. That one was almost instant. Pillar off to the right. Tap. Locked up. All right. And again, look at the exposure change there when I line up on the pillar there. Okay. All right. Now, last but certainly not least, let's do a zoom test. So, like I showed y'all earlier in the software walkthrough, you can indeed lock the lock the focus. You can indeed lock the exposure. And let's do that before we start testing the zoom. So let's lock the focus on that tree there. Let me go ahead and expose the image properly. Whoops. Okay. And uh, let's try to get the clouds looking right. Uh, something like right there. Let's lock that in. Okay, so we're locked in. And now, you can do the pinch. You can pinch the zoom up to four times there. As you can see, so you can pinch in and out. Or they have this real nice ball that pops up on the screen down at the bottom that always tells you in real time what your zoom is. So right now we're on one time zoom. Let's go up to 0.5. So from one to 0.5. 0.3.5. So that's 0.5 times zoom. What do y'all think of the detail of attention? What do y'all think of the overall stabilization? Let me know down below. That's 0.5 times zoom. I mean, 1.5 times zoom, my bad. Okay, let's go up to two times now. All right, so 1.9. Two times zoom right here. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? All right. And then let's go up to four times. Let's max it out. So this is max zoom right here. Okay. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Okay. And then we can also program the volume rockers to control the zoom. That's one of my favorite ways to do this. So let's zoom back out again and zoom in using the volume rockers and you get nice tactile clicks with the volume rockers. So let's go. 1, 2.5 times zoom. 1.5 times zoom right here. 1, 2. 2.1 times zoom right here. 1, 2. 2.7 times zoom. 1, 2. 3.3 times zoom. 1, 2, 3.9 times zoom, and 4 times zoom. So what do y'all think? How did the cameras do? Let me know down below. All right, let's zoom out now. Boom. All right, so this concludes test number one for the front and rear-facing cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. Once again, all of these tests you guys and gals see here today were done in 720p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So whether we use the front or the rear facing cameras, you got to see the footage coming directly off of the device. You got to hear you got to hear the audio coming directly off of the device as well. So please let me know what you think of this device's overall camera performance. Now, let me go inside and we're going to redo similar tests with the front and the rear facing cameras indoors, daytime, low light. So give me one second. Let me run inside and set up, and I'll be right back. I'll see you guys and gals in a little bit. All right? All right, everyone. And now we are indoors, and we're testing out the front and the rear-facing cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro, and this is the indoor daytime low light test. So starting off here, we're testing out the front-facing 8-megapixel sensor here, and this is pretty much a stationary vlog style video in 720p, 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So everything you guys and gals are seeing and hearing is coming directly from the device itself. All right. So let me know what y'all think of this right here. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and I'm going to give y'all a test 
of the rear-facing 16 megapixel primary camera. Give me one second. I'll be right back with that test for y'all. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, everyone. Now, as promised, all I've done is spin the cameras around, and now we're testing out the rear-facing primary 16 megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro in 720p at 30 FPS, indoors, daytime, low light, with no external audio hooked up. All right, so let's do some verifications and jump right into the testing. So if I pan over here, you guys and gals can see we only have one light source and that's the natural light coming in through the window here. You can see I have no other lights turned on. So studio lights is off, the smart lights is off. The only light we have lighting up the scene here today is the natural light coming in through the window here. So this is indeed indoor daytime low light testing for these cameras. Let's see how they do. All right, so verification done. Now let's go ahead and line it up and position the cameras in the traditional reviewer style angle here. So let me back up a little bit. Okay, that looks about straight. Okay, and now let's angle it down. Okay, let me back up a little bit more. Boom, there you guys and gals have it. So now we should be straight on. Yep, 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 we are straight on. Let me pull this out a little bit. Okay, that's out all the way. And this is how the primary 16 megapixel camera performs indoors, daytime, low light, okay? So how's it doing with the detail retention on the keyboard there? How clear, how sharp, how legible is that text? I'm gonna hold it up and pan it through for y'all in a second so y'all get a little bit of a better look. How's it doing with the light representation? How's it doing with the detail retention? How's the overall audio? How's the overall stabilization? Y'all let me know all that good stuff, your opinion on all that good stuff down below in the comments. Remember to keep it respectful, please. All right, let's get into these tests. So holding up the keyboard here, how does this look? How sharp, how legible is this? Again, this is in 720p, 30 FPS. Now, honestly, that doesn't look too bad. That looks nice and legible, even in this lower light scenario here. So you can see struggling to focus. Let me pan it through. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad at all. Pan it back through. Okay. All right. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Let me know down below. All right. Now, let me send that back up. Now, let's grab a device and let's test out some focusing speeds in this lower light scenario. So, what do we have? Here today, um, S7 active, S8 active. Let's use the trusty, dusty S7 here. So let's bring it in tight. Struggling to focus a lot there. There it is, it locked focus. Okay, and let's pan down to the text. That bigger text is not too hard to read. It's a little fuzzy. Go down to the smaller text here. Oh, it doesn't like the smaller text. Not in this lower light. Got some focus struggles. There it goes, it's kinda locked. There it is. It's kinda locked up, but it's still very grainy here looking through the viewfinder. Check out the shallow depth of field going on. So you see how nicely it blurred out the keyboard in the background as it attempts to keep the text in focus for the smaller text in the foreground. Check that out. All right, let's see how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. If I take the phone out, we're gonna do this two times. Ready, three, two, one, go. Boom, and we're back. So 
It took a little fraction of a second there, but it it relocked focus on the keyboard relatively quickly. Can't argue with that. But it's, it is a lower light scenario, so that little hesitation, I was expecting to see that. All right, let's bring the device back in and see how quickly it can relock focus on the device and the text and how quickly we can make it legible. And then we'll take it out again and then we'll wrap the video up. So let's see, bringing the device back in. Ooh, we got struggles. We got struggles. Okay, okay it looks like it's in focus. Um, how legible is that, y'all? How readable is that? Here, if we tilt it all the way in the light, how is that? All right. All right, let's take it out. Look at that shallow depth of field going on in the background there. Now let's take it out and see how quickly it relocks on the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boom. And we're back on the keyboard. So not bad. A little bit of hesitation the first time. Much quicker the second time. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay? Okay. So this has been... A real quick test here, testing out the front and the rear facing cameras on the uh, Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. And this is indoor daytime low light. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit later on, we're going to test out the front and rear facing cameras again. And it's going to be nighttime in artificial lighting settings here. All right. And then a little bit later on tomorrow, we're going to redo the test again all over in 1080p at 30 fps so 720p and 1080p which is the maximum resolution that's what i'm going to be testing this device in in terms of the video performance all right so i'll be right back with the next set of tests for y'all i'll see y'all in a little bit it will be a couple it will be a couple hours for me it will be a few seconds for y'all all right enjoy these next set of clips let's go all right, everyone, and now we are back in testing out the rear and front-facing cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. Now we're testing out the front and the rear-facing cameras in nighttime artificial lighting settings here, all right? Starting off, we're doing a vlog-style stationary test with the front-facing 8-megapixel camera. So this is being recorded with the 8 megapixel front facing camera in 720p at 30 fps with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality, the overall audio quality, the overall stabilization, all that good stuff down below in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. How are these cameras performing? Giving my two cents. The detail on my face and the color representation on my face looks good, but the background, in particular with the whites, like the white on my doors and the white on my closet and the white on my walls, is super overexposed. It's looking extra white white. It's not supposed to be that white. They need to rein in the colors just a little bit, okay? Okay. But let me know what y'all think. Anyways, let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and let's do a similar test with the rear facing primary 16 megapixel cameras. Give me a second. I'll be right back with everyone for that test. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the rear facing primary 16 megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. This is indoors nighttime artificial lighting testing here. And this is in 720p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So without further ado, let's do some verifications and let's jump directly into the testing. So panning over here, y'all can see there is no natural light coming in through the window. Y'all can see it is pitch black, but y'all can see we do have my smart bulbs lighting up the entire scene here this evening, okay? So quick verification, and you can see in terms of color representation 
the rear facing cameras do do a lot better than the front facing camera and the front facing camera is a fixed focus lens so you don't have any focus controls with the front facing camera you don't have any exposure controls with the front facing camera at least for video but you have all of that with the rear facing 16 megapixel primary camera all right now let's angle this up in the traditional reviewer style angle so let me back up a little bit and let's angle it down right about there good let's frame this up good and so this is what the primary 16 megapixel cameras look like framing up in the traditional reviewer style angle that's kind of off center hold up there we go in nighttime artificial lighting settings here okay let me hold up the keyboard now and let's check the detail retention okay so how sharp is that text how legible is that text on the keyboard it does look quite nice it's locking in a nice focus here. The text looks sharp. Everything looks pretty sharp. Let me pan it through. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? That actually looks really good in my opinion. Let me pan it back through. What do y'all think? Put it down. All right. Now, let's do some focusing speed tests here. Y'all can see, got the trusty dusty S7 active right here. Let's lock and focus on the back. That actually looks pretty good. This more than usable right there. Okay. More than usable indeed. Let's go into the sharper, smaller text at the bottom. Little bit of a struggle there. Struggling a lot right there, even with a lot of light on the scene. There we go. It kind of locked focus right there. All right. How legible is that, y'all? Let me know down below. How readable is that? How legible is that? Look at the nice shallow depth of field going on in the background. That's all natural because this is being recorded in auto mode. So you see how it blurs out that background? That's some nice blur back there. And this text is actually looking quite readable there. All right. Now let's check the focusing speed. So let me take the phone out and let's see how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Mad struggles. It did take a second, but it did lock back up on the keyboard. And I know if you were paying attention, you caught that. So it did struggle a little bit there before it relocked the focus. Now let's see how quickly it can gain focus back if we bring the device back in. Let's see. All right. And actually, that was pretty quick. Let's go back in on the text on the bottom. It is struggling a little bit, struggling a lot of bits to get that focus. Will we have to assist it? It's struggling, it's struggling. There it is, it got it. It did take a few extra seconds there, but it got it. How sharp is that? How legible is that? Okay, now let's take it out. Look at that shallow depth of field. Let's take it out. How quickly will it lock back up on focus on the keyboard? Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Struggling and locked. Okay, so it did struggle. It did struggle in this artificial low light scenario here, even though these are some really good quality lights. It did struggle. Y'all can see the focus did take a little bit of an extra second there, but it relatively did a good job. So honestly, can't complain there. Can't complain at all. Anyways, this wraps up the 720p testing with the front and rear facing cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. 
Now, a little bit later on in the week, we're going to test out the cameras again. Outdoors, indoors, low light in 720p, 30 FPS. Then we're going to come back and give y'all my overall opinions on the camera and my overall recommendations as to if you should pick up the device strictly based off of the cameras. All right? So y'all stay tuned for that extra coverage. For y'all, it will be a few seconds. But for me, it will be a few days. All right? I hope you guys and gals enjoy it. And I'll be right back with the last set of footage for you guys on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. All right, everyone. How is everybody doing today? Back again with another video sample test for everyone. Now, we're testing out the front and the rear-facing cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. All right, so starting off the test here, we're out in the big yard here today, or at least the side of it, and we're testing out the front-facing camera in a nice stationary vlog-style camera test. And y'all can see now the, the camera is having a really hard time because we are out here in direct sunlight now, technically, it's direct sunlight, and you can see the sun peeking through the trees here, but I'm sitting in the shade, so this should actually look really good. But looking through the viewfinder here, I do see the camera is struggling with some very serious overexposure. But still, real quickly, we're doing this vlog-style front-facing camera test out here. Let me know what y'all think of this, okay? Let me know what y'all think of the audio. Let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality down below y'all know how that goes all feedback is greatly appreciated so real quick front facing vlog style test all right everyone and now we're testing out the rear facing primary 16 megapixel camera on the Ulephone power armor 16 pro all right and as i said we're out here in the big yard here today to test out these cameras in 1080p at 30 fps with no external microphone hooked up, all right? So y'all let me know how y'all feel these cameras perform. As I said, now we're testing out the 16 megapixel sensor, all right? And there y'all can see I already did our quick pans. Now I'm trying to hold this as steady as possible because this particular device does not have any stabilization of any kind and I have extremely shaky hands. So I am using one of my recording rigs here, okay, to try and stabilize it a little bit. I didn't want to give y'all a shaky mess with my shaky hands, so we're not doing this handheld. But you can tell, all right, that there is no stabilization on these cameras, but we're going to test these cameras nevertheless. So let's jump into the 1080p camera testing for the rear-facing 16-megapixel camera. All right, so starting off here, we're sitting in the shade here today, okay, underneath my favorite tree in one of my favorite spots in the big yard, and we already did the pan, so let's go ahead and do a quick exposure test. So let's line up on this tree right in front of us, and we're going to pan up and down. Now, when we test the exposure, we want a nice even transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as quickly and as evenly as possible so it doesn't irritate our eyes as much. So let's see how these cameras perform. Now, I'm pointing it out in direct sunlight, but I am sitting in the shade, so we should get a good idea of how the exposure handles on this device. So let's get started. So we're lined up on the tree, and we're panning down. Okay? Okay. And we're down, and we're coming back up. A little bit of an exposure shift there. Now, I can barely see the display in direct sunlight when I pan all the way down. But when I bring it back up, as soon as I get to a certain angle, I can see the display. And I did see a little bit of an exposure shift. So that was one. We're going to do it two more times. Going down. Okay. Okay. And then coming back up. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm not even going to try and struggle. I'm going to just watch it back to see how bad the exposure was. 
So that was two. And let's go with the last one. Okay. And that's number three. Let me know what y'all think. How was that exposure test? Even if it's bad, I'm still going to post it. Because y'all know this is just to show you how the cameras perform. I'm not going to do any type of edits. I'm going to throw in some transitional edits. But that's it. The original footage is going to be untouched. So how was the exposure test there? Now, let's jump into a focusing test. So we're going to test out the continuous autofocus as well as the tap to focus. We're going to do continuous autofocus first. And let's see, let's see, let's see. We're going to use the trailer right there as focal point number one. We're going to use the big tree over the shed as focal point number two. And then we can use the mango tree off to my far left as focal point number three. All right. Now I'm going to cycle through this twice with the continuous autofocus. And I'm going to adjust my grip and do the same thing for tap to focus. And again, I want y'all to tell me down below in the comments how you feel these cameras perform. Let's get started. So going over to the trailer. That looks like it's lined up. Okay. Okay tree over the shed that also looks like it's lined up okay mango tree to my left that look like it's lined up that's one let's do it one more time trailer boom tree over the shed boom that should be lined up mango tree boom all right let me adjust my grip here so we could do the tap to focus and let's go again trailer tap damn that was almost instant locked up wow wow that was quick okay tree over the shed tap locked up again almost instant but then again we're out here in almost perfect lighting here today okay even though we're in the shade but man that was fast mango tree to the far left tap Locked up a little bit of over exposure there when I locked up on the mango tree. You can see those highlights kind of blur out around the edges. But man, that focus was quick. Coming back. Oh, 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 oh. All right, y'all. So we are back in now. Now, as I said, I'm going to leave the footage untouched. So I'm just going to cut directly after I dropped it. Okay, because I did drop it. I was doing the focus test. And right at the, the second one, it kind of dropped. And man, it's heavy. And it was kind of a struggle for me to pick it up. But we're going to leave that footage in there. That's actually uh, uh, drop number three. Yeah, I've actually dropped the device uh, three times in the camera test. And I'll be sure to report that in the full review too. But honestly, the device is still in mint condition. It's a little dirty. Um I'll probably take my uh, disinfectant wipes and my microfiber cleaning cloths and give it a real clean, a real good scrub down before the full review because it, it done dropped in the grass so much. Um, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, finishing up the camera test here before we go inside and do some additional testing, let's do the zoom testing now. Now, as I said in the other video, you can use the on-screen controls to control the zoom. So you can slide your finger on that, that zoom toggle that's always available. Or you can configure the volume buttons to control the zoom. Okay? So on and so forth. Right? And you can go up to four times zoom. Okay? Let's zoom all the way back out. Now, I'm kind of sad. Because it looks like my focal point that I used to do the zoom testing in the big yard here, they kind of took it down. There used to be a half stump for like a, a, a pineapple tree. If y'all remember some of my older videos, it used to be all the way out there. And you can see it looks like they got rid of it. It's gone. It's gone. So we do have what looks like a little bit of a pine bush out there way in the distance over there. 
Let's go ahead and let's lock focus on that. Let's lock exposure on that. Let's dial it in. Okay, that looks good. And then let's zoom in. Okay, and we're going to zoom in all the way up to four times. So right now, the cameras are at one time zoom. Okay, so basically no zoom. And let's zoom in. 1.5 times. Okay, let's keep going. 2.1 times. Okay, let's keep going. 2.7 times. Let's keep going. Three times. 3.5. Four times zoom. Now, what do y'all think of the color representation, the detail retention, and the overall stabilization? All right, that's one of the reasons why I like testing the zoom at the end of the camera test because that the zoom tests everything. So what do y'all think? Now, to me, based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, the image did get darker as I zoomed in, and it is noticeably shaky. Even though I'm trying to keep super still, it is noticeably shaky. But what do y'all think? All right, let's zoom out. And now we're back to no zoom. And of course, now the sun has went away. All right. All right, everyone. And now we are back in. This time we're testing out the front and the rear facing cameras on the Ulophone Power Armor 16 Pro. Indoors, daytime, low light settings here. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up with the front facing eight megapixel camera. Nice little, quick little vlog style test here. Okay, so y'all let me know how this footage looks. Y'all let me know how this footage overall sounds. Y'all let me know what you think of the overall stabilization down below. As always, all your feedback is greatly appreciated. Just remember to keep it respectful, please. All right, everyone. So now I've spun the cameras around and now we're testing out the rear facing 16 megapixel camera on the Ulophone Power Armor 16 Pro indoors daytime low light. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So let me do some verifications and then let's jump right into the testing. Let's try not to waste any time. So panning over here, Y'all can see that the only light, the only light we have coming into the scene here today is the natural daylight coming in through my window shades here. So if we keep panning, y'all can see that no other lights are on. Not even my studio lights are on, okay? So we are only lighting up the scene here today using the natural daylight coming in through the window. So this is indeed an indoor daytime low light test. Let me angle that back. All right, and now let's try to position this up in the traditional reviewer style angle. So this looks straight. That looks straight. And let's angle it down. Let's be careful because man, this thing barely fits in my mouth. And wow, was I off. So we weren't straight at all. We were not straight at all. And we're still not straight. Too much touching. Okay. Okay. That that looks good. That look that looks good. All right. Let me go forward a little bit. Boom. I think we're straight. Wait 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 wait. Okay. Uh, wait 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 wait. Okay. I think we're straight. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? This looks like we're straight on based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder. So this is what the cameras on the Ulophone Power Armor 16 Pro look like in the traditional reviewer style angle. And again, this is indoors, daytime, low light. What do y'all think? How does that overall image look here? Okay. Let me do a detail check. So let's pick the keyboard up. 
How legible is that text there? How readable is that? That actually looks really good, honestly. In this lower light scenario, that looks really good. Nice and legible, nice and sharp. Let me pan it through for y'all. And let me pan it back through. Okay, put this down. What do y'all think? Straighten that up. Honestly, this doesn't look half bad. Like if I didn't have a bunch of good quality lights and I wanted to record just using the natural daylight, I can act I actually think this would be some decent footage. Now would it be the best footage? Oh no. Oh no. But could it be use, usable? I think so. All right, so now let's do some focus testing and then let's wrap the video up. So we got the trusty dusty S7 active here. Yep, and let's see how quickly it locks on focus. So it just reported a focus lock, so how does that look? Now let's go down to the bigger text. How does that bigger text look? Let's go down to the smaller text here. Let's see if it can handle the smaller text. Yep, it just reported a focus lock. How does that text look? How sharp is that? How legible is that? Now that's not too bad, honestly. That looks decent. That looks decent. What do y'all think? How legible is that smaller text there? Check out the nice shallow depth of feel going on in the background here. Check that out. All right, and let's see how quickly it will lock back up on focus on the keyboard behind us after we take the phone out. Ready, let's go. Three, two, one, go. Little bit of a struggle there, but still really, really quick. It locked up focus back up on the keyboard really, really quickly. There was like a moment's hesitation there, but it locked up relatively quickly. So, you know, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Let's bring it back in and do it one more time. So bringing the device back in. Let's see how quickly it locks up on focus. Now it just reported a focus lock. So what do y'all think? Now let's go down to the bigger text. What do y'all think of that? Let's go down to the smaller text. How legible is that? Now it is having trouble focusing right here. There it goes. There it goes, it just reported a focus lock. What do y'all think of that? Again, how legible is it? How sharp is it? And again, let's check out how fast it will lock focus back on the keyboard when I take the device out. Ready, three, two, one, go. Boom, and we're back on the keyboard. So really, really quick focus, even in these lower light scenarios. And overall, based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, the detail really isn't that bad. Now, is it the best in the world? No. Is it top notch? No. But if you have good lighting as the testing is showing, based on what I'm seeing from looking at the playback, these, this can actually produce some good video to really good video. Not top notch video, not phenomenal video, but good to really good, but you really do need that lighting. All right, so now what I'm gonna do for everyone is a little bit later on, we're gonna come back and test these cameras out for the final time, indoors, daytime, low light, daytime, indoors, nighttime, artificial lighting settings, and then I'm gonna wrap the review up, and I'm gonna let y'all know what I think of the cameras on the device, and let y'all know if I recommend the device based on my experiences with the cameras. Because a lot of people nowadays strictly make their purchasing decisions based off of the camera performance. And I have no problem giving y'all my recommendation based off of my experience with the cameras. Now, is that something that I would do? Oh, no. But do I understand the appeal of it? Yes, because for a lot of people, their smart device is like their only device. It does everything. So having a device that does everything you need and have some really good cameras to it is, is important to a lot of people. So we'll be back with the final set of clips. 
It's going to be a couple hours for me, but it's going to be a couple seconds for you guys and gals. So I hope y'all enjoy these next set of clips, and I will be right back with everyone. All right. Peace. All right, everyone. So welcome back to the next set of video camera test samples for the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. Now, this last set of samples, I'm recording a little bit out of order because I'm going to finish the video with the front-facing camera samples, um, the front-facing vlog-style camera sample, and I'm going to share my overall thoughts. So this camera full review video or camera walkthrough video should be one of the shortest camera walkthrough videos that I've ever made, all right? But starting off here, we're starting off testing out the rear facing 16 megapixel primary camera on the Ulophone Power Armor 16 Pro. And this is nighttime artificial lighting testing here, okay? So let me pan over, let's do some verifications, and then let's jump right into the testing. So panning over here, y'all can see it is indeed nighttime. And if I pan over further, you can see we don't have any studio lights running. All we have is my smart lights, um, and they're set to white. And my overhead lights are set to 100% brightness, but my lamps are set to 20% brightness. Okay, just so y'all know how the scene is set up. But the color tone for all the lights, all the smart lights in the room is set to white and it's set to 20% and 100%. So 20% on the lamps and 100% on the overhead lights. Okay, all right. Just wanted to let everyone know that in the interest of full disclosure. Now let's pan back over and let's line this up in the traditional reviewer style angle. So that does look straight. Let's go ahead and pan it down. And of course, it's not straight. Ooh, I need to go over this way a little bit. There we go. There we go. And let me back up a little bit. Boom, that's straight. All right. So this is what the rear-facing 16-megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro looks like in the traditional reviewer style angle and this is again being recorded in nighttime artificial lighting settings here in 1080p at 30 fps with no external microphone hooked up so let me know what y'all think of this okay now let me hold up the keyboard here and let's see how good the cameras at the cameras are the main cameras are at detail retention at maximum resolution. So holding up the keyboard, how sharp is that text on the keyboard? How much detail are the cameras retaining? How legible is that? And looking through the viewfinder, this looks extremely good. I can't even lie. This looks extremely good. Nice and sharp, nice and legible. I can easily read that. Let me pan them through. Oh, yes. And let me pan them back through. Okay. Put that down. Honestly, that, that looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty good. Now, for the harder test, let's do a focusing test in this lower light artificial lighting scenario. So, S7 active on deck. Okay, and it reported a focus lock. So how good does that look? Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Let's go something, something a little harder. The big text at the bottom, how good does that look? All right, let's make it even harder now. That small text at the bottom, is that legible? Can you read that? Now, the angle that I'm looking at the viewfinder at, I can't read that at this angle. But is it in focus? Can you read it? How legible is it? Let me know down below. Actually, it looks like it might be kind of out of focus. 
Yeah, it looks kind of out of focus to me. Let me see if I have to assist it. Let me tap on it. All right. And that does look a little bit better. All right. Look at that nice shallow depth of field going on in the background there. Look how blurred out the keyboard is. Is that small text legible? Let me know. I still, I don't know, kind of, sort of. Yeah, kind of, sort of, if I tilt it like this. But I don't know, okay? Now let's check the focusing speeds. Let's see how quickly it relocks on the keyboard in the background if I take the phone out. Ready? Three, two, one. Go. Struggled a little bit, just a little bit, but the focus relock was actually kind of fast. Kind of fast indeed, but there was a noticeable struggle in relocking focus on the keyboard. Now let's test it one more time, then we'll wrap the video up. So let's bring the S7 Active back in. Focus on the back pattern here. That reported a focus lock. Okay, move up to the bigger text. We got a focus lock right there. Move up to the smaller text. How legible is that? Again, it's look like it's struggling to lock focus. Less assist. So let me tap on that smaller text. And it did report a focus lock. So again, how legible is that? How easily or uneasily can you read that? Let me know down below. Look at that nice shallow depth of field going on in the background. All right. And once again, let's see how quickly it relocks focus on the keyboard when we take the phone out. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Definitely big struggles and it just locked back up. So it is noticeable. So you definitely need a lot of light for these cameras to do a good job. But once the focus is locked, it does give you decent video. And all in all, checking out the audio on playback, the audio that this device is actually able to pick up is actually really, really good. So this has been the final low light artificial light test for the rear facing 16 megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. And once again, this was recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So now I'm gonna spin the cameras around to the front facing camera and I'm gonna give y'all my final thoughts along with the final camera sample of the front facing camera in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. Let me spin the cameras around and let's get ready to close out this video and let me gather my thoughts and give them to everyone. So give me one second and I'll be right back with y'all with the final clip for this camera review. All right, I'll be right back. All right, everyone. And now we are back in and here we are testing out the front facing eight megapixel camera on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. This is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up, all right? Real nice stationary vlog style clip, okay? So let me give y'all my overall thoughts and make an overall recommendation based on using the cameras on the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. Can I recommend you guys and gals pick it up? Well, let me break it down. In terms of the cameras, in terms of photo performance, this device is actually capable of taking some really good photos. If you have really good to phenomenal lighting, all right? Once the lighting goes down, the photo performance on these cameras really does suffer. Now, again, as I said earlier, I tested these cameras with three different modes. Night modes for night mode for the low light performance, okay? Portrait mode and you can notice the difference, and then auto mode, okay? I didn't test any of the other modes in terms of photos, right? But that performance dip is painfully apparent. Now, outdoors or in situations when I had good to phenomenal lighting, 
took some really great photos. Check out the photo samples for yourself. But when the lighting went down, the photo performance did dip. But this device is capable of taking some really good photos if you have a little bit of patience and a steady hand and you're mindful of your lighting. So it is capable of really good photos. Now, jumping over to the video performance, the same performance metrics apply. If I have really good lighting, I can get some really good video, okay? And this is the maximum resolution for this device right here, 1080p, 30 FPS. But outdoors or in situations where I had really good to phenomenal lighting, I got some really good usable video. I didn't say phenomenal video. I didn't say top-notch video. I said really good usable video. And when the lighting went down, the video performance did suffer. No more is that more painfully apparent than with the front-facing camera right here. This is by far the worst camera on this device, okay? Because it doesn't give you any controls when recording video. You don't have focus controls like you do with the rear-facing camera. You don't have exposure controls like you do with the rear-facing camera. And when the light dips, the performance of the camera for video for the front-facing camera really does suffer. Now, I'm going to leave this all unedited, right? I'm just going to put in some little edits and some transitions into the video, but I'm leaving everything all unedited so y'all can see exactly how this device performed in terms of the photos, in terms of the videos, okay? Now, going back to the beginning of this clip, can I recommend y'all pick up this device strictly based off of the cameras? No, no. This device was released this year, okay? Pretty much late 2020. It was released this year. And for it to have cameras like this, can't recommend it. Now, granted, this device was not made with the cameras in mind, okay? This device was purely made for durability and battery life. Those were the two main things that this uh, device tried to conquer, right? And it does that, it delivers that in spades. This is by far one of the most durable devices that I've ever tested. And in terms of battery life, forget about it. Like all of my typical battery measuring metrics and tools, they don't register this device properly. So, for what it is, the device knocked it out of the park. For what Ulephone was trying to accomplish with the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro, they did knock it out of the park. Now, I do have to ding it for its shortcomings, so it won't be getting a full five-star rating for me when I put up my written review. It just it doesn't have the camera performance, okay? It doesn't have the video performance. And although it has great battery life, the charging speeds are abysmal. Abysmal. Especially by today's standards. It has great battery life, but when it takes me three to five hours to get a full charge, granted, it's going to last for about five to seven days with light usage and easily three days with heavy usage. But when the charging speeds are that slow, I got to ding it for that. All right. So that pretty much does it for this full camera review or photo and camera and camera walkthrough video like I always do. And once again, can I recommend y'all pick up the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro strictly based off of what I've experienced with the cameras? Well, again, I'd have to say no. Is it the worst camera I've experienced? No. Can it take some good photos and good video? Yes. 
But for the price that they're asking for, it really should have some way better camera, right? This device, which I'm holding upside down, this device, right, is a lot older. And it has a better, lower quality front-facing camera than this device, okay? I believe this one is two megapixels versus eight. And this one takes way better front-facing photos, takes way better front-facing video, all right? The real camera, again, this device is much older and it still takes better photos in my experience and better videos in my experience. And again, lower quality megapixel camera here. Now, megapixels aren't everything, but this is the benchmark for which all devices here in 2022 in terms of cameras should at least try to hit. Okay, so really good overall photo performance in any scenario, top notch in good lighting scenarios, top notch overall video performance in any scenario, top notch in good to really good lighting scenarios. And this is a lot older device. Okay, and again, same overall concept. When Samsung brought out this device, durability and ruggedness was their main factor, okay? That's why this device actually had the best battery of all the um, S series, okay? When this device came out, and this was one of the most durable devices in the active lineup with the shatterproof display, reinforced corners. This is very similar to the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. And the Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro is newer. So why is this older device better than this newer device in terms of the camera? All right, let me get up out of here. I'm rambling. Y'all know how I feel about this. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Help your boy out with one of these. If you would like to know anything else about this device or check out any of the continued coverage, all those links will be linked up down below. And also, if your interest is peaked, all the purchasing affiliated links will be linked up down below along with all the full time stamps. So feel free to jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about. And also, as the name implies, those are affiliate links down below in the video description, meaning when you use those links, I do get a small percentage of kickback that I do put back into the channel so I can keep bringing you guys and gals content at no additional cost to you guys and gals. So it's a win-win for everyone in my overall opinion. Also, don't forget to let me know what you think of this overall video quality, this overall audio quality, and the overall stabilization on this one. All right. All right. I think all we have left to do now is wait for me to get my Moto G Power 2020 unlocked so we can test out this device again fully with data always enabled with it bouncing back and forth on Wi-Fi and LTE, and then we can come out with the full review. So I got about a month left on this, about 30 days left on this, before I can attempt to get it unlocked again. And then I'll be able to drop the SIM from my iPhone into here, and we could test it with LTE and data enabled the same way we've been testing it on Wi-Fi. And in all honesty, if my data is correct, I feel like once I put it on LTE, the battery life is probably going to drop by a good three to five hours. So right now, I'm averaging about, about 12 to 15 hours of on-screen time with, with heavy usage. That's about three days. Okay? 
with light usage, that's about seven days. All right. And I feel as though that's going to drop um, about three to five hours once I enable the data and drop my SIM card into the device. Still really good overall battery life. All right. But that's how I'm feeling. I'm not going to, you know, um, guesstimate. That's just what the, the numbers are showing me. But I'm going to wait till I can actually test it with my SIM in it before I bring out the full review. But hopefully, th this camera video helped you guys out. Hopefully, the software walkthrough video helped you guys out. Hopefully, the gaming video helped you guys out. Hopefully, the unboxing video was enough to pique your interest so you can come back and keep watching. Hopefully, all the coverage helped you out. And you know if this device is worth picking up if you want to spend your hard-earned money on it. That's what this is all about. All right. Have a good one, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed this. I hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there. And I will catch everyone on the next one. We are out of here. Have a good one. Peace.